So I've been looking forward to this one. Um, finally arrived. I know there's been many unboxings uh, for All Things Must Pass. Mazzy <laughs> had a classic one where he was, beginning of the video, he was sort of uh, hauling the box set up his driveway. He got the, the $1,000 one, the big one. Um, I did not, and I've I've never done an unboxing, and this isn't even gonna really be an unboxing, but I'm, I guess I'm gonna share my first experience with All Things Must Pass. Here's my original uh, that I have, uh, which I bought for nine bucks at Village Music, which if I'm not mistaken was in Marin, uh, and has since closed. Um, and I am absolutely thrilled to have the new one. I'm also gonna share some other records. Uh, I have been on a spree of late. Uh, a couple trips to the record store. This is going to be part one of, I guess, two or just ongoing uh, in terms of new stuff that I've gotten. But let's start with this, which arrived um, just a few minutes ago. Landed on my front porch. So let's open her up. I think uh, I'm not even gonna say what I think it is because I honestly, wow, this looks incredible. Uh, here is, I'm gonna go this way. Here is, my dog's sort of trotting around. Here's the cover, which you probably can't see, but this is more green and this is, a dark green, this is gorgeous. What a treat to finally have this. Got the nice binding. George Harrison, all things must pass, session out, takes, and jams. Uh, I've been taking stickers off and putting them on my water bottle. <laughs> so I'm gonna try to get this off. Got some good ones in here, some from my road trip. Uh, that's a band I used to manage called Star City. Uh, they had two great records, which I will try and link to. Um, I just got this Wilco California sticker, Electric Fetus, which was a great record store in Minneapolis that I stopped at. Um, Rockin' Rudy's in Missoula, 60th. Impulse Records, The Shins reissue right there, Checkered Past Records, uh, and what's this one? Mad City Music in Madison. That was a great road trip. So let's take the plastic off of what I was saying there. Was just, this is a sticker, what do they call it? The hype stickers? I'm gonna take this sticker off and put it on the water bottle. But for now, let's take a look at the 50th anniversary of George Harrison's All Things Must Pass. Again, now that the plastic's off, let's, uh, wow, it even smells good. Starts with this booklet. George, some great, I knew what I was gonna, What a great opener. So it says, even before I started, I knew I was gonna make a good album because I had so many songs and I had so much energy. For me to do my own album after all that, it was joyous. Dream of dreams, George. I won't show you everything, but uh, it's a cool little booklet to start, which is followed. Wow, this looks like a large, poster. Look at that beast. Poster of George. It's huge. Um, and now let's see. Whoa, this is a lot going on in here. So this is just a jacket. No record in it. Here is, oh, they each have, they each come with a separate jacket. That's really nice. 
All Things Must Pass. Another jacket. More All Things Must Pass. I'm not doing a good job here of saying what these things are, but I'm just gonna show you the visuals. Another nice jacket. This is Apple Jam. There you go. So that's three records. Another jacket. Four. Are these colored? No, no. Just regular black vinyl. Another Apple Jam. And another record. So five LPs. I think I got that right. Uh, let's get this back where it's, this is just beautifully packaged. I love the green colors. Um, and the back, there's nothing. So before, after the Yankee game tonight, this is going on. All things must pass, which I've said 708 times. I have been really excited for the arrival of this box set and I can't wait to play it tonight. Now, just uh, I went to uh, my record store this past, uh, or a record store in my neighborhood this past Sunday, and they had a lot in stock in terms of good used stuff. Some of which I didn't know very well, uh, or, or I knew like I knew the artist but didn't really know the record, and sort of just went with a leap of faith. Um, so I'm going to show you. And there may be one or two, they, were these all purchased? One, there's one that was not purchased that day. Uh, so this, uh, Lee Morgan is one of the jazz artists that I've really been getting into of late. This, I don't know, even know what this is. Lee Morgan's Special Value 2 Record Set. It was 12 bucks. Came out 1973, the year I was born. So we'll see what this is. I've yet to enter this into Discogs because I think on first try, I could not find it. <laughs> um, next, I was really excited to find this, uh, the final Silver Jews record, uh, Look Out Mountain, Look Out Sea. I have all of their records, uh, or I had all of their records with the exception of this one, and now I have it. Uh, obviously, David Berman, uh, who just a few days ago was the anniversary, the two-year anniversary of his passing. Um, he, of course, put out the Purple Mountains record, one record under the name Purple Mountains, prior to uh, passing away. He was actually about to go on tour, and um, he passed away. So Purple Mountains record, I think if, if somebody said, what are your three favorite records since 2013. I don't know why they'd say that, because it's eight years ago and not 10, or oh, let's say 10 years ago. I would probably say Jason Isbell's Southeastern, uh, the Purple Mountains self-titled record, and the latest Waxahachie record, St. Cloud. I'm probably missing a few, um, or forgetting a few. Jeff Tweedy's uh, Love is the King would be in there as well, a record that has, it's only been out a little while, but it gets better and better with every listen. I think it might be the best record Jeff Tweedy's been involved with since A Ghost is Born. Love is the King, check it out. But Silver Jews, so happy to have this. Suffering Jukebox, such a great song. Um, just such a talent. I miss David Berman a lot uh, in the music that he gave us all. Uh, I watched the In Groove uh, the gentleman from Phoenix, Arizona, who owns the store, uh, The In Groove. I'll put a link. Most of you are probably well aware of who that is, but I'll put a link to his store. I buy a lot of records from him. He is really informative. His videos tell you all about new releases and sort of the high-end records that are coming out. And he has a phenomenal recent video about acquiring George Benson's uh, record catalog. It's really worth watching for anybody who loves music and just loves hearing about those types of experiences when you meet like a musician that you look up to or it could be an athlete or a politician, whoever. Um, 
it's just a really sweet story about the day he spent with George Benson. I will put a link to that video as well. But because of that, I looked around all music for some George Benson, and this was one of the top rated albums. Good King Bad, I don't know if this is a soundtrack, um, but I picked it up, uh, haven't listened to it, and I can, it was only seven bucks, I can thank uh, the gentleman from the in-groove uh, for uh, talking about George Benson and inspiring me to pick that up. Also got this, these were all in new use section, it looks like they've acquired a bunch, my local record store uh, has acquired a bunch of catalogs. So Harry Belafonte, Midnight Special. Uh, a f good friend of mine sent me a note that when I, I talked about this, I think on Instagram or something, and apparently Bob Dylan, this is the first record that Bob Dylan played on. He played harmonica and just played on one song. Is it? Yeah, right here, Bob Dylan harmonica. Courtesy of Columbia Records. Um, there's a story like he played on one song and then like left the studio or something. So this came out, what year? Was it 1961 or I'm not sure. But I'll let you know about this, Harry Belafonte. Uh, I'm a huge, uh, not. Uh, I've talked about hip hop sort of late 80s stuff that I was into. Um, Boogie Down Productions was one of my favorite bands from that period, and I found this key cuts to KRS-One from Boogie Down Productions uh, from Retrospective. And it has a lot of the songs that I, Criminal Minded, South Bronx, My Philosophy. Um, this was only a couple bucks, and I love KRS-One, so I picked that up. First time, I don't know this artist really at all, Amy Winehouse. I heard a few songs when she was popular, never got into her. Um, I know that a, a lot of people, a lot of my friends absolutely love her music, so I figured it was time. I think this is considered her best record. Uh, Back to Black, it's only 20 bucks. Uh, so I am gonna spend this soon. I'm excited about giving you that a listen. This was all in the same bin. I just, I was going through, I was like, man, there's a lot of good stuff here. I put a lot back because the, the the tally was getting too high. Uh, this is the soundtrack from the film Love and Mercy about Brian Wilson. Uh, it has uh, Good Vibrations by the Beach Boys. It has Love and Mercy Live by Brian Wilson. Uh, God Only Knows. I think this is colored vinyl. It's this was only ten or eighteen bucks, and it's unopened. Um, it's a record store day release, so looking forward to that. This artist's records are getting harder and harder to find. I remember they used to be in. I used to see them in record stores, and I don't anymore. And if there's ever an artist that needs to reissue their catalog, it's Steely Dan. This Royal Scam is one of my favorite Steely Dan records. Uh, has Kid Charlemagne, Mark, your favorite Steely Dan song. Don't Take Me Alive, one of the more underrated uh, Steely Dan songs. Uh, Haitian Divorce, Green Earrings, Caves of Altamara. This is a great record. Um, and I, now when I see Steely Dan for sale, used copies, they are getting more and more expensive. So I'm glad I found this. Um, and again, I think they had the Steely Dan record, Asia, I think it was 50 bucks. And I remember that being in used bins for like five bucks. I don't know why I didn't buy it at the time. Next, another phenomenal find, Aretha uh, Lady Soul, a perfect record. I've listened to it digitally a lot, didn't have it on vinyl. So pumped to have this. I listened to it uh, when I got home Sunday night, amazing. This I bought new, uh, and it feels like it's sweet. So that's the record store, Needle to the Groove, uh, in San Jose, California. Great, great record store. This is the Brian Jonestown's Massacre, their Satanic Majesty's Second Request. Has the great song All Around You. Uh, 
it looks like an intro. I don't know if it's the song, but um, I, this is only the first, maybe second Brian Jones Style Massacre record that I have. So I was really excited to find that. So that's it from that trip. I'm making this a qu quick video, just trying to get some new content out. But I also got, of course, the new Sunvolt record. Uh, and it's called Electro Melodier. Uh, this is a, a funny story. Um, this record was in uh, the common area of where I live. So I live in a bunch of condos. And somebody broke into our mailroom and took this, <laughs> opened it up. Apparently they weren't a Sunvolt fan and just chucked the box with this back in it on another mailbox down the road. <laughs> and the person found my note on next door and returned it to me. So thank you to that neighbor. And somebody, maybe Jeff Tweedy moved to my neighborhood and he saw that it was a sun, he just tried to steal a sun a record from me, saw it was Sunvolt and chucked it. And that's not, probably not a funny joke anymore. It would have been funny when they, after they broke up 15 or 25 years ago. So that's it. Uh, no record. Um, I wish more people were familiar with. I'll get back to that on the next one. I'll be back in uh, a couple days to do uh, the second round of, of new ads, but now I'm going to go listen to All Things Must Pass. Hope you're doing well. Talk to you soon.